In this video, we're going to look at bonding in general, whether it be covalent or ionic bonding. This video will extend upon a previous idea of potential wells. On the y-axis here, we have potential energy. On the x-axis, we have R, which is distance. And this point will be zero. So imagine we have two objects and one of the objects is fixed at a distance zero from itself. So let's imagine we have an object here. It could be an atom or a molecule. It doesn't really matter. We'll keep it general. But we have an object here. We have another object over here that for now it's infinitely far away and has no potential energy interaction with that object. So let's call this object A. And let's imagine again we have an object uh, over here, B. Well, right now, the potential energy for object B with respect to object A is zero. This value extends into infinity and it's always at zero. So that's not interesting. But if object B now starts to get close enough, for example here, then there's going to be values below zero. So these are going to be negative values. So for example, here we'd have a negative potential energy. Here we'd have zero potential energy, but clearly here we're below the line. This is a negative potential energy. Okay, one thing we should point out at this, at this instance is that a negative potential energy means an attractive interaction. Uh, a positive potential energy means a repulsive interaction. And zero potential energy means no interaction, or well, but neither. So it's neither attractive nor repulsive. OK, so let's imagine now this object gets further along again. Let's imagine the object is here, exactly hovering over this lowest part of the graph, which is the most negative value, so it's the most attractive part of the graph. That means that at this distance, wherever this distance is here, wherever that distance is here, let's call it Rm, then that distance leads to the maximum attraction. So this will manifest to be the bond length. Whether it be an ionic bond or a covalent bond. Now, what happens if I try and make the bond length a bit shorter? Well, if I'm here, if I'm right in the middle here and I'm sat right at the bottom of this well at my maximum negative value, then if I move slightly to the left, I'm going to become less negative as I move in a positive direction. Well, if you move in a positive direction, that's repulsive. So as soon as you do that, you're just going to go back down again. What if I go the other side? I go further away. Well, that's repulsive. So I'm just going to come back down again. So if I'm right at the bottom here, whether I go left or right, I'm going to be facing a repulsion. 
both of which are going to push me back down again. So another way to think of this is imagine a marble. Imagine a marble. You know, if you put the marble right at the bottom of this potential well, it will stay there. If you put a marble anywhere to the right side of the bottom of this well, it will naturally roll to the left. To an increasingly negative potential, which is attractive. It's attracted down into the well. If you put this marble any place to the left of the bottom, likewise it will roll back to the bottom again. It will increase its negative potential. It will be attracted back to the bottom of the well. So yes, you can jiggle the marble, but the marble will always try and return back to the center of the well. So if we return now to the actual molecule or the atom, yes, this can vibrate a little bit, but the net bond length on average is going to be Rm. To annotate this graph, this is a, a well-known plot. It's called the Leonard-Jones potential. Potential energy, it's going to look like a funny equation, but it's very interpretable. So the Leonard-Jones potential is the number four the value epsilon. Epsilon essentially is the depth of this well. So it uh, has units of potential energy. So it's four lots of the deepest part of that well multiplied by the following. Multiplied by something called um, sigma over r raised to the power 12 minus sigma over r raised to the power 6. r is just units of length. Sigma is also a unit of length, but it's a fixed unit of length. Sigma is the length from 0 to where the potential is 0. So this point here. That's sigma. So where there's no net attraction or repulsion here, that's sigma, it's a constant, units of length. Epsilon here um, is the deepest part of the well. And because we have this form here, we know that the overall potential energy is the sum of the repulsion and attraction. So this distance ratio to the sixth power is over here. This is the attractive part. This distance fraction to the twelfth power, which ultimately dominates, is why this graph changes direction. Um, because as you can see, as R gets smaller, the factor of 12 hits that numerator greater than this factor of 6 does. So at large R, the attraction dominates. At smaller r, the repulsion dominates. And essentially, there's a distance beyond which there's no attraction. And we would interpret that as nuclear repulsion. So the positive charges of the adjacent nuclei, which just repel each other and ultimately contributes to our understanding of the universe having a size. You know, can you imagine if there was no repulsion? Everything would condense to a zero point and there'd be no floor to stand on, there'd be no sky to have above you, there'd be no anything. Um, so Leonard-Jones potential, very convenient way to look at general bonding.